What's up OSC? Welcome to Daily Devos and happy Friday to you guys. Thank you for joining us today. I want to start off by asking you a question. Have you ever felt rejected before? Or have you ever felt wrongly accused, um, despised by people uh, based on things that weren't true about you? Um, have you ever been in that situation and just wished for a friend or a counterpart or someone that was on your side that knew how you felt that could just hold your hand and walk with you through that brokenness, through that rejection, through that disappointment. I'm sure many of us have been in that situation before and we've, we've felt and experienced what it's like to be lied about, to be wrongly accused, for the truth to be completely twisted and taken out of context and used against us. Um, and so today, I just want to take a moment to talk about that. Our reading today is from Mark chapter 15. And for me, this chapter is one of the most important chapters in the entire Bible. Mark chapter 15 is about the, the crucifixion and the rejection of Jesus Christ. And in this chapter, we see Jesus start off um, standing before Pilate and being questioned about these accusations against him. And Pilate asks him if he's the king of the Jews. And in this entire chapter, that's the only time that Jesus speaks up for himself. And Pilate asks, he said, are you the king of Ju the Jews? And Jesus said, it is as you have said it. And then from there on throughout the chapter, we see the Pharisees mocking him throwing out harsh accusations against him, comparing him to, um, to rebellious, um, you know, people who were accused of treason. And then we continue through the chapter and we see Roman soldiers beating him and mocking him and, and ridiculing the fact that he claimed to be the king of the Jews. And this entire time we see Jesus being rejected, thwarted by man, just completely and utterly um, broken hearted, really, to say the least. And when you see this, when you know how important Jesus is to our faith, it's almost hard to wrap your head around this chapter and understand why God would allow his son to go through something so um, so difficult, so um, completely tragic. And we see Jesus experience so many things, none of them that he deserved. And none of these situations does he speak up for himself. None of these situations does he raise his voice to defend himself. None of these situations does he try to give truth in response to the accusations against him. And it, it makes you wonder, why, why was Jesus so silent? Why was he so, so patiently humili humili humiliated in this chapter? And it's almost, it, 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 it's a combination of, of humility to read it and knowing that Jesus didn't deserve all of that, but it also kind of causes like a, a holy anger or frustration to rise up in you when you see what Jesus was subjected to needlessly in those times for, for, for no apparent reason, for nothing that he was guilty of. And so I just want to take a moment today and, and jump back to uh, Isaiah chapter 53, which is a, a beautiful prophecy in the Old Testament that actually was written somewhere in the neighborhood of about 200 years before Jesus walked on the earth. And so I'm just going to read a little bit from that chapter. And I'm going to start in Isaiah 53, verse 3. And just bear with me. This is um, definitely a heavy read. But it says, He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses that he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down. And we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins, but he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so that we could be healed. 
All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut off in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal and he was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants and he will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. That's beautiful and that's humbling to read. But that is the reason that Jesus was put through such anguish. It was for you and it was for me. So if you are watching this today and you have been rejected, you've been manipulated, you've been wrongly accused, you've been subjected to treacherous and tragic things that you did not deserve. Sometimes in life, we don't need happy answers. Sometimes in life, we don't need encouraging scriptures. Sometimes in life, we don't need someone to show us the way out. Sometimes in life for a moment, we need someone to understand what we've been through and to just sit with us while we mourn for a little bit. And through that comes healing that allows us to put one step in front of the other. And so I wanna just encourage you today that whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, whatever you're struggling to heal from and to walk forward from in your life right now, Jesus was subjected to everything that you've experienced. Every bit of sorrow, every bit of anguish, every bit of abuse, Jesus experienced it personally for you so that you could have a savior who understands your sorrow, who will sit with you while you mourn, who will hold your hand while you cry. And it says that this was God's plan all along. And that whenever God looked down and saw all that was accomplished by the crucifixion of his son, that it was pleasing to him to know that you would have a savior, a personal savior, who is not far removed from your problems, that is not far removed from your anguish, from your sorrow, but who's near and can have a true sense of empathy with you because he experienced it also. So today, taken away from Mark chapter 15, I, I just, I wanna encourage you at some point today Go read Mark chapter 15 and see all that Jesus was subjected to. And then go back to Isaiah chapter 53 and read that that was God's plan all along and that he had significant purpose in it for you personally. And then just take a moment to stop and worship God. Because you have a Savior that is acquainted with your grief. And he knows what you've experienced and is willing to hold your hand while you grieve so that you can heal and move forward in his presence. So today, maybe a, a little bit heavy, but I also believe that it's extremely encouraging knowing what God sent his son to do for you. It wasn't by mistake, it wasn't by chance, and most of all, I want you to know today that you are not alone, that there is hope and that you have a savior that was, that was beaten, that was abused, that was rejected, that was wrongly accused so that you wouldn't have to experience that alone and that you can move forward from it. So let's pray today. 
Holy Spirit, I just thank you for your healing power, not just physically, God, but emotionally and spiritually, God. I know that there are people that are watching this right now that feel trapped by their unforgiveness, that they feel trapped by former abuse, that they feel trapped by sorrow that they can't let go of, that it wraps them up. But God, I pray that today, that the scripture that says that you will exchange beauty for ashes, a garment of praise for our heaviness, God. We hold tightly to that today. And I pray for every soul that is experiencing sorrow or anguish or loss or rejection that today, God, that they would experience the presence of a Savior who is near to them. And that you would hold their hand while they grieve and while they heal. And that while holding your hand, God, you would lift their head. You would lift them up. And that they would walk out of that prison of sorrow. That they would walk out of that prison of shame that they would walk out of that prison of unforgiveness, God, into freedom that their Savior so willingly laid his life down for, that he didn't even open his mouth to defend himself because he knew that he was standing in our place. So today, God, free your people by the presence of your Savior who knows what they've been through. And let us experience your presence as we celebrate and as we rejoice and as we worship. Jesus, the name above every name. We love you, God, and we thank you for everything that you've done for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. God bless you. You have a great weekend. Hope to see you on Sunday. And I challenge you again, go read Mark chapter 15. Go read Isaiah 53 and allow it to transform your heart and your mind today. Amen. Amen.